Today we'll be proving that L, any language L, is decidable if and only if it is recognizable and its complement is recognizable, which is kind of nice. So if you have a recognizer for a language and for its complement, you can get a decider out of it. And one thing that this implies is that ATM bar, the complement of it, is not recognizable. And why is that? Well, we prove that ATM is recognizable, but undecidable. So if ATM complement was recognizable, then this thing would imply that it were decidable, but we proved that it wasn't decidable. So that means that the complement of ATM must be not recognizable. So how do we actually prove this? Well, whenever you have an if and only if like this, it's helpful to prove both directions. So the easy direction is the forward direction. So that says if L is decidable, then L is recognizable. So if L is decidable, and I'm going to make a shorthand with DEC and REC, I don't want to write the whole word a bunch of times. If L is decidable, then by definition, it already is recognizable. And that just comes straight from the definition. Decidable means that the machine for it must always halt on all inputs, whereas the recognizable one only has to halt on the ones in the language. And the ones not in the language doesn't have to do anything with. It can even run forever on those. And one other thing that we can notice is that decidable languages are closed under complement because if the machine always halts, we could just swap the queue accept and the queue reject state. And if it went to the accept state before, it will hit the reject state now. And if it hit reject before, now it hits accept. And all inputs halted so, by assumption. And so therefore, uh, they're closed in the complement. Which means that uh, L decidable implies L bar decidable. And by the thing we just argued, that implies that L bar is recognizable too. And so that's pretty easy. The other direction is actually a little bit more challenging. So let's say that A recognizes uh, the language L and B recognizes, recognizes L bar. Let me make that E look nicer. So let's say that we, we're assuming that we have the two recognizers, the one for the original language and one for the complement. And I want to make the um, decider for the original language. You can make it for the complement too. It doesn't matter. So, okay, so what do we do here? Well, the thing is, well, if I feed an input to either one of these guys, and I don't know whether it's an L or not, then I don't know whether these machines will run forever or not because they're just recognizers. They might not halt on the strings that are not in their language, but they must halt on the strings that are in their language. And the key thing to note here is that all strings, every single string, are in L or in the complement, because that's what complement means. It's every other string that is not in L. So that means that uh, we can figure out, okay, well, this, either this machine must halt on the string that we're given, or this one, or both, possibly. But uh, I'm guaranteed that at least one of these will halt. But the problem is, if I just run the first machine on that string, and then run the second one on it, the first one might run forever, and then that's not going to work. If we switch the order, again, same problem. So the key idea here is to simulate them in parallel, so to speak do one step of each of the machines at a time until one of the two says accept, because one of the two will say accept at some point. So here's how we're going to do this. So to decide the language L, we're going to write this high-level description. So on input W. So the first step is we're going to uh, repeat forever. And that may seem like a red herring, but we're going to add a break statement in. We're going to add an, a, an accept or reject statement inside to, to help this. So 
the step first step within that loop is uh, run uh, a on w for one more step. And the second one is to do the same thing for b. Okay, it might be that one of these two says something on this input. I don't know necessarily. It may be that neither of them has said anything at this point. And if neither of them have said accept or reject at this point, we're just going to run for another step and just keep going. We're guaranteed that at least one of the machines will stop eventually. So how are we going to handle this, though? So if A uh, has accepted at this point, then what are we going to do? Well, A is the, is the, the recognizer for the language L. And we're trying to decide L. So if A has accepted, then we need to accept also. Because it, ha it has the same language that we're trying to decide in the first place. So we need to say accept. And in fact, at this point, it's as if we just ran the recognizer A and, did, and nothing else. No B machine needed. But here's the crucial step. Is the step D right here. So at, at this point, if B has accepted, then remember that B is the language L complement. So if B says uh, the, this string is in the complement of L and we're trying to decide L, therefore we need to say, no, it is not in our language, it's in the complement language. And so we need to here reject. And that's the whole machine because we know at least one of these two machines will hit these one of these two steps at some point, or theoretically it could hit both, but at least one of these two will happen at some point because of the definition of what they are. They are recognizers. And notice that I haven't said anything about whether A did rejected or whether B rejected. You could add steps in here to handle that, but it's no need because we don't know anything about these machines at all, other than that they have to accept on the strings that are in their language. And every string is in either this language or this language. And then therefore we can uh, decide this language. So uh, we, can, we have shown that decidable languages, if and only if they are recognizable and their complement is also recognizable. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your thoughts about this theorem and proof down in the comments down below. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.